Oh my goodness, Neil. Neil, hey, what's up, guys? Tyler here. This is Neil. Hey, my, my name's Neil. How's Neil Greathouse. Um, he is uh, an acclaimed filmmaker. Wow, you went straight into this. I know. I'm not even, even playing around. The last one. With I want to do chit chat. Nope. I want to. I want to like talk about other things. We're gonna get down to business, Man. like a contract in the toilet. <laughs> you get it? Because when you swirl it, it goes down. But it's a business contract. It's so bad. Hey, you know who hey, one of my guys. favorite business people is? Joseph Tilly. He's a musician. He is. Wow. Are we going right to it? Well, first, I need to remind people. Okay. Our ultimate goal with this podcast is not, yes, we want you to enjoy it. We want you to learn something. We want to be your best friends. Go on. Who help you stay the smartest person in the room. Correct. But also, we want you to comment in German on Joseph Tilly's <laughs> Instagram uh-huh. about how amazing he is on this show so that he listens to it. That's our only that's, goal. I really, that's, and when we do that, it raises money for charity. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes I heard. It was really. It was for a. Uh, okay. Was at a conference. It was at a. a no. It was at a, a a a Christian conference, and the MCs were like, you know, we're we're trying to sell these things, and we're trying to raise money for ourselves to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. I like it. Um, so thank you guys so much. As you guys know, we bring you the heat. Is this a real one or is a Patreon? This is a. Uh, I mean, everything's real. Sure. Is this a Patreon or is this? A, I don't know. Let's say this is main. Okay. If you're on the main channel, what's up, gamers? Hey Tyler guys, here. How's it going? This is Neil Greathouse. What's happening? Claim director. <laughs> I'll just oh my loop it back around. Yeah. And uh, and we have there episodes for you every week. Yeah, we do. On the podcast, here uh, it is. you can get them every on Monday. YouTube, Tarver Academy YouTube. That's my YouTube because Neil hasn't said no yet. We'll just keep putting <laughs> them on there. And then we've got it on uh, Apple yeah. Podcasts. We got on Spotify. Everywhere's podcasts are supposed for free. Everywhere and here. Everywhere here's. I call them podcast. <laughs> if we had a potato based <laughs> podcast it would be sp- spudcast. spudcast i would i would subscribe spinoff naturally sick yeah. all right so if you guys want uh check in to our <laughs> episodes every week there oh we got the bonus episodes at our patreon.com so let's explain everything that's the intro that's probably the most comprehensive intro we've ever done i think that's the greatest only thing we need now is joseph tilly drop that beat hey how's it going Welcome to the Tyler and Neil Explain Everything podcast. Now officially your fourth favorite podcast. Hit the subscribe button and make sure you go to patreon.com slash explain everything to get exclusive episodes. Looks like we made it. Neil, you know what we're talking about today? I'm so excited. You've been putting this off. I'm not. I'm not excited about this. Why not? This is dope. Okay. Hey, I'm going to talk about me. So here's some more me. Is that mine? Is that yours? That's your man. We're falling apart here. No, we're not. Our studio. This is what making it sound. <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, uh-huh. today. We're talking about yeah, making, yeah. We've yeah. done writing a book, which is all I've ever done in my we, life. That's, and Neil has actually it. done something much more impressive. He has actually uh-huh. made a movie, start to finish, scratch concept to well, publish. Y- you made a movie. You're actually credited in this thing. Your That's mo- because your you're a nice guy <laughs> and you wanted to give me credit, even though I was not invited to help film anything. Oh, but what do I know? I've never oh, filmed anything in my life. Man. Get all your friends who film stuff, <laughs> but don't invite me, Neil. Don't invite me. Fly all your little friends out everywhere across oh, the world to go my film gosh. people bicycling across America. Neil, tell me um, <sighs> what... Tell, give us a little bit of a summary, right, a little okay. Wikipedia recap of, of what you did. Yeah. And stop. If you're humble, every yep. time you act humble... <laughs> I'm uh-huh. gonna yell Tanya Harding. Here comes because <laughs> it's a shot to the knees Man, when you it. don't tell me. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Just be honest. So I'm very proud of it. Uh, it it's a big deal. I don't really go around saying it to people, but uh, we did. We we directed a documentary. It's called uh, Bike Beyond. When you looking at me, I, you did it. You I don't know, have to look you at know, me. I know. Uh, I know. It's, it is. it's called Bike Beyond, uh, and it was done in partnership with uh, Beyond Type One, who's a nonprofit organization in San Francisco. Who owns that? Who's like a big, big name? Any big names we know from that? There's a couple. Who? There's a couple of Who? them. So it's Nick Jonas and... Uh, Nicholas re- Jonas So when we Jumanji. made this, a lot has happened since we actually did this. So at the time, the four founders were Sarah Lucas, incredible. She was the CEO. You also had Juliet de uh, She helps to run the Red Foundation for uh, Bono, and she oh, does wow. a lot of other things. She's incredible. She's... Um, 
she's like a, you know, there are like certain people that you know, go, man, they're a powerhouse. Like yeah. that's the kind of like, she's just constantly working on stuff. And then Sam Talbot, uh, Sam Talbot is, um, he won uh, Top Chef a couple of uh, times, like a fan favorite. He has a, a restaurant in Montauk right now up in New York state. He's an incredible chef. We actually, so we had the day before we actually went out and, and shot this. So that when, the, so, okay, there's a lot, there's a lot here. There's actually, you, we, I, we could talk about this. this could be a long episode, but it won't be. So Sam Talbot and then, and then Nick Jonas, um, okay. Nick Jonas is the fourth founder. So what did he do? What has he done? What has he done? You gave the summary of everybody else. What's he, he done? He has, he has diabetes. <laughs> he has diabetes. Excellent. He has type one. He has type one. Wasn't diabetes. he also in camp rock? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> yes, That's 100%. So, wait, okay, so the Jonas Brothers are Nick Jonas, mm-hmm. Joe Jonas, yeah. and then what's the third one? Uh, Pete. No, no, D- that's Davidson. Pete Davidson Jonas. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That there's a third one, uh, and this is why he's the third one and not the other one. So he had a TikTok. What's his name? Find his name. I don't know. We're going to find out. Nick, Joe, and... I'm going to say... Dave. Bill. Kevin. Is it Kevin? <laughs> yes. So Kevin Jonas. Sorry, Kevin. Did a um, Camp Rock is like a like a cheesy Jonas Brothers movie they were in uh-huh. uh, back in the day. Oh my god! Um, whenever the whole all of YouTube was just Jonas Brother fan videos. That's all it was. And uh, they had they they he made a TikTok of the description on Netflix, and he he filmed it, and he goes, "I will never hear the end of this." The description <laughs> of it said, "Nick and Joe Jonas." Like try to save their uncle's camp, and he's like, he's, he's not the, even in it. Yeah, he, no. he's in it. Oh, and, he, and they, they have just nothing didn't put him in the description. Okay, which is why we don't know his name's Kevin. Exactly, and that's Netflix's fault. We would know, yeah. Kevin. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, yep. so uh, those that's a that is a powerhouse. It's, it's a, a big pretty, deal. Yeah, yeah, it's a big a big organization, and they partnered with you, or how did yeah, they? How yeah. did this work? So what happened is uh, I had done about a year previous to this. I did a short film with them called Type One Day One. Yeah, I saw an, it. It was an idea that I had of if you got type one diabetes on your first day, what do you do? You typically Google it. This idea came from a couple of things. One, you don't know everything that you need to know, but you remember the movie 50 first dates. Mm-hmm. I woke up in the middle of the night and had this idea. I was like, wait a minute. The way that Drew Barrymore's character would put a VHS tape in every day. And she was like, I was like, oh, this is my life, whatever. And then when you're ready to wake up, you can come out and meet the rest of your family and all that. Like people have so much to learn on their first day of type one. What if we show them what it's like? And then we do a bunch of kind of curated. It's like people send in footage, encouragement, whatever. And we put this thing together. It's like a 20 minute. But anyway, so, uh, Victor Garber was in that one. There's a bunch of NFL players that were in that. Some other pretty big name people. How did you get them? Did you just reach out and you were just like, Hey, or does it through that organization? I I was on the leadership council with beyond type one at the time and said, I think this could be great. Would you want to do it? And they said, yes, that was my first attempt with them. And then being on the leadership council and doing a bunch of other things after that, then we had one of the guys, uh, Walt is one of the cyclists. So the, the general premise, for, Walt, I'm Walt. sorry. All I'm going to do is scream people's <laughs> names from movies Walt. and TV shows. Uh, he had an idea. He said, listen, he's done some of these cross country rides before, but he said, I'm, I'm the only person that ever has type one on these. What if we did one? And so it, that, as far as we could tell, it's the first of its kind. We had 21 cyclists that were all novice cyclists. None of them professionals. There are professionals that do this, but like actual real amateur mature cyclists that would get together and they flew in from Canada, from Australia, from uh, the UK, the United States and uh, New Zealand. Wow. They came together and they started in New York city, had never met each other in person. And everyone had type one diabetes. Every one of them has type one. We got them together and they started in New York city and they rode their bikes from New York to San Francisco. It took them like 72 days or something like that. So they have a route. It wasn't like, Hey, what's the most direct route we could take? What they did is we incorporated along the way, like pop-ups. So the, the first big one, I'm trying to think if it was in, well, every day they would meet people in the community that have type one. And kind of, it was a lot of kids, a lot of young adults that were, they were like there to encourage. And it was kind of inspiring along the way. So the first big pop-up was in, was in Cleveland, downtown Cleveland, like right on the square. They had inflatables and music and stuff and and games and all this kind of stuff for people to come. It was sponsored. There's a huge stage. They gave presentations, all that kind of stuff. We did another one in Nashville. There was a concert that they did. There's one in St. Louis. There's one in Denver. There's one in Napa Valley and one in San Francisco. So they, they were big events that they were a part of all the way across the country. So the route 
route that they had to take wasn't like straight across. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause you said Cleveland and then Nashville. I was like, Nashville's yeah, a little it, low. Yeah. It's, it's definitely all over the place. So they, they, they got some miles. So 4,200 miles, uh, that they Dang. cycled, which is a lot. So the, how long did it take them? Uh, it was like 70 some days. It was two, two, two and a half months. Uh, so they started in June, finished in, in August and it was ridiculous hot too. So it was, yeah. it was a lot. So, um, the, the idea was that they would do that. And I was on some of the first phone calls and Sarah, who was the CEO at the time, she said, listen, what if we were to actually like, could we, could we do something with social media with this? And I said, what if we did one better? And then we started talking about, and all these people, it was everything. So the idea did. happened, they were going to do this before they were going to make a movie of it. Right. Yes. Okay. I said, what if we could put all this together and inspire people after the fact? Because if you're only doing it during the ride, like we always say, this document don't create, like actually we put this thing together. Could we make a movie out of it? So that's when we started saying, okay, let's actually, let's do this. Now this is a lot because you're talking, you're talking about following them from, I mean, that's a long, and I already have another full-time job, yeah. which was kind enough to let me go out and film this. Yeah. We had people from all over the country that jumped in and helped us film. We also had people from here that helped us film. I've lost track of how many people. Did I help you film? Um, I don't know, Tyler. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll answer it. No, I didn't. <laughs> No, I didn't what, help. What were you doing during this? This is like two and a half years Waiting ago. on you. I'm I just so started the job working at the oh, same place as you. Oh, that was it. And you was asked it. everyone else. I, we were told the first year, Tyler has a lot. He's starting a university. Give him some space. And I listened uh, to him. Unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. Unacceptable. So we put together this crew. Uh, um, Matt Huber and Josh Huber made the soundtrack. They scored the entire thing. The, okay, there's two different ways to do a documentary. One of them is you go backwards and do a bunch of research and compile interviews with people and actual stock footage or, or footage from the actual thing or whatever, and you tell the story of what had happened, or you film something as it is happening, and then you have this end goal. The problem with that is we didn't know how this was going to go. Yeah. Most of these people, only one person on this trip had ever done it before. To all these other people, they were practicing uh, there was a guy, so Sid Sharma, he was in the UK. It was snowing and he was practicing riding his bike. Two or three of these people were in Canada, snowing, riding their bike, practicing, getting ready wow. for this thing. Did you have like requirements? Did you tell them like you have to reach this point oh, yeah. by this? Okay. Yes. Yeah. They, well, had, they had really strict requirements because okay. you, what you don't want to do is you don't get out there and you go, well, I actually I can't make it. I don't, right? Yeah. Kind of like whenever it. I rode that 100 mile race in Texas, <laughs> but I'd only ever ridden oh. 30 miles max. Are you serious? Yeah, I've told you that. Yeah, but I didn't know you'd only done 30. That was the most I'd ever ridden. Oh, and gosh. I, I used to ride every morning, but we'd only do like 20 or 30 miles in Little Rock. And then we went to oh. Texas and did that hotter than H. You did 100. It. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. brutal. My entire body shut down by mile 65. So I would not have been a candidate. No. One, I don't have type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Two, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, yeah. my body would have shut much. down. It's too much. By the end, I'd have been fine, though. So what we did, this is hilarious. Like, I, I, you you know what the, the hero's journey is, the hero's arc. Yeah. Uh, so if you were to really do that and say, how do we actually tell this story? story of what they have to and we mapped it out I had it on a massive black board where it was sticky notes and i had yellow ones were for locations green ones were, were for emotions blue ones were for certain people and we started plotting out from left to right where we think this thing would actually go yeah and that was my presentation to them i said listen here's i think this thing could go here but in my head i said i think by utah they're gonna hit their all-time low yeah. By the time we get there. And I was sadly mistaken. It hit so much sooner than oh, that. Oh, I bet. It it's was, like two it was months yeah. of just every day, what, riding like every, 100 miles a day? Yeah, every day they would ride between, it was about 50 to 100 miles a day. Okay. And uh, they had to drive the vans. They had to actually, they were their but own But who support. were driving the vans? So what they would do is they would rotate through. One of the people, it was their van day. They would get off the bike and drive the van. And they were the support van to help them set up the food, the, the water stops, the, all this kind of stuff. So on the East Coast, it wasn't as bad. When you get into the middle of the country, is when, and honestly, Kansas was probably one of the worst ones because of the, the, the wind. Oh, yeah, because there's no mountains in Kansas. Right. It's like Utah flat. and Nevada were absolutely brutal. Yeah. You, and I you, you just don't think like that. You think that it's going to be flat, whatever. It's not. It was, it was rough and, and dry. Colorado, the Rockies was the point where that's why I thought they would actually fall apart. The Rockies was the biggest challenge. I mean, they, you Is know, it because of the going up the hills. Yes. It was insane. And it's not like there's not an easy route to no. ride. You can't go around them. It would have taken an extra. They, they, I think they said it was about two to three weeks to go around the Rockies to be able Whoa. to, and you can't do it. Yeah. So you had to go through them and they went right through Denver and, and all the way. I mean, every, it was, is insane. 
So huh. those days they're not going as far, but the um, the elevation is just yeah. insane. Oh yeah, they got to slow down there. They're, they're, they'll yes. kill them. Yeah. So what we did is we said, okay, we're going to have people that will film them for four days at a time. Uh, here, three days at a time. Here, five, five. Sorry, five days, five days at a time. It's my microphone. It's my microphone. They would film them at different at different segments, but we actually got sponsored. We actually got sponsored by GoPro. Oh, nice. So GoPro provided all of the cameras, all the gear, and we had our after party at their GoPro headquarters. Did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? Uh, we reached out to them. Well, I guess they, how could they reach out to you? They didn't know you were doing the Yeah, they didn't know we were doing Okay, yeah. and but that you reached out and said, this is what we're doing? That wasn't me. That was Beyond Type 1. Oh, so great. Sarah Lucas and their team were incredible with this. But they also, so specialized bikes. They yeah. made their bikes custom for all of these guys. The problem, and they didn't know this, we had uh, we had different food companies that sponsored. We had a bunch of different like um, people sent in so uh, the amount of food and drinks that you consume on this thing. Oh, is, they're you're burning a so many calories. Full of so it was like these these food companies, these protein bars, and and you had people that were celiac. You had uh, people that were gluten free. You had people that were uh, vegan. You had people, and they all have type one diabetes. So you're creating different meals for everybody. The people that that provided the bikes, they provided them up to a certain point. And we didn't really know that going into it. Wait, so, so that like you had to return the bikes up to a the, certain. These bikes were like six grand a piece. Yeah. And what they were going to do is after it was over, they were going to say, if you want them, you have to pay. It was almost like fifteen hundred or twelve hundred dollars. Still a good deal, uh, uh, which is still a great deal. But these yeah. guys all work regular jobs. They took off two and a half or three months of their life to go do yeah. this. We had a guy who was, uh, and we didn't find it out until Napa, and it was incredible. He was there, one of the sponsors for the foods that was that were there, and he's he's it just emotional moment he said listen I'll, I'll pay off all the bikes whoa so he bought the bikes for everybody at one of the the uh, one of the stops in that that's so, awesome yeah it was it was it, it made the movie like we actually got it to put it in the movie because it was and we didn't know it was happening and it was getting super dark there everybody was like there it was like this huge party I and mean, it was incredible it was yeah. at this uh, at a winery it was gorgeous out it was beautiful people had come from all over the country to be there to celebrate just because they had one more day after napa they were going one more day. Mm, yep. One more day to actually get to San Fran. Yeah. So that was like their, Hey, you're almost there celebration. And yeah. then he just the said, penultimate episode. Yeah. And we got to that spot and we had cameras that were off the side. We'd already captured most of it. And all of a sudden somebody said, Hey, I, I think this guy's going to do this. We're like, what? And so Tom share who actually was, well, the CEO for a while as well, beyond type one, he made that announcement. We barely got cameras and mics up. For that moment, I it remember that moment in, it the, was in the movie. So scary, yeah, that was tricky. So we we mapped this thing out. Said we think this is what the route is going to be like, and let's go out and capture this. So GoPro sponsored it. So we had we went to New York City. They were still putting their bikes together. This is the first time any of these riders have actually met each other in person, and they're there. They're about they to spend like two three days with each other. Yeah, I mean every every waking moment together. Sorry, I'm trying to hold it. So. And staring at each other's compression shorts, riding down the road I mean, for like every day. Every day, every yeah. day, they had to learn how to ride in teams. It yeah. was very difficult. It's not super easy. So we taught them how to use the GoPros, all the mounts, all the clamps, everything, and they recorded. So we have that's um, so much footage, bro. I think all told, after this thing is all said and done, we have seventy-two terabytes. That of is absolutely from, insane. It's too much. Well, do you still have all of it's it? It's way too much. It's stacked in in hard drives. Uh, yeah. So Beyond Type One has them, and I have them. Um, yeah, it was kind of wild. So the amount of that's the thing too is you're trying to get the footage off the cameras every time you're with them. So we would give them these GoPros and have them film their themselves, their emotional moments, and all that kind of stuff. And then we would have to get that uh, offload every bit of that footage while we were there with them for two or three days while cycling through new GoPros and, and cards to give them. It was it was tricky. And you're just trying to like cut through like I'm assuming like while you were doing it, you're trying to film it. But right. then also you right. would kind of like to like, okay, I need to like, you know, either like figure out a story and film and lean into that. But also you're probably wanting to chop down all that footage. Oh, yeah. That's insane amount of footage, Neil. There's a lot. So we did interviews with them every time we got together. So you're setting up cameras to get interviews. So we filmed in each one of these places. We, like in St. Louis, it was nuts. So the amount of permits you have to get to shoot something like this. Let me, I wrote down, hang on, where you had to get permits from. So you had to get permits to film on some of the public roads on the New York Ferry in Zion National Park, the Golden Gate Bridge. There was a... Did you, how far in advance did you have to do that? Like you had to plan ahead this oh, entire yeah. route, yeah. call every single city, make yeah. sure the... 
it was it was a lot of work. That seems but insane. That's where Beyond Type One staff did an incredible job. Oh, okay. They helped set up these routes ahead of time. So every morning when these cyclists would wake up, they would get their route for that next day. They would see their elevation, where they're going to go, the directions. They all we all used um, Life Three Hundred and Sixty. So we could track where every one of them were. They could see where the the water stops are going to be and all of that. They would get into the hotel. They would take a shower and then they would have to go out and do a meet and greet with people like in the community who were like there. So uh, there's there was a, a town um, in the middle of nowhere out west. And it was just one little boy. He's the only kid in his whole town that with diabetes, that with diabetes little, little tiny kid. And they went out and saw him. And, uh, and then cool. he showed up at the end. He came oh, to San Francisco. Awesome. His family surprised him, and he was like little three, like four or five year old kid. Um, the uh, the the work filming it was actually the least amount of work. Oh, that because it's in real time. But yeah. it, your your time expands when you've got what? How many people were there? Seventeen? No. How many cyclists? Yeah, twenty one. Twenty one people. Right. Who are all filming pretty right. much the whole time? Right. Um, and you're pulling what? Five seconds, maybe from each right. at the most. Yeah, and you're trying to figure day. out like which w- what part makes it, what part doesn't. Because yeah, there's stories you can't tell. Rubbing through all right, you could make. So during this, I actually made the suggestion. I said this could be a ten part series. Yeah, we could pitch this to Netflix, and instead of saying, "Hey, this is going to be one," we'll give you this whole thing, and it will give us more time to develop those stories because they each had a story. Did we, you do that? Did y'all pitch it? We pitched. It didn't go. Oh man, it didn't go. It, well, it was man. honestly, I think post pandemic. It would go. Yeah. Pre-pandemic, no. No. Uh, They're looking for content at that point. So, yeah. So, um, we we said that... Go ahead. No, I had a question. So, so looking back at what you said, looking back at... I'm sorry. um, So, looking back at what you said already. So, you made the short film... uh, was every day is day one. What is it called? Type type one day one. Type one day one. So you made that short film first. It was like what a twenty. Wasn't it twenty something minutes? Twenty five. Twenty five minutes. You made that first, and you the expectation was I'm not not like oh this is going to be the prelude to a movie like right, it wasn't no that this is the pilot. You're like no I think this would be a good story to tell, an important story to tell. Right. You pitched it. They said yes. Yeah. You filmed it. You did all that. And then you, I mean, you were not waiting, but you were just living your life, working, doing your thing, right. being a part of this leadership council. And then they, I'm assuming, approached you about doing social media for this guy's trip across the country. And you were yeah. like, hey, do you remember what we did there? What if we made, we did more? What if we made yeah. it? Like you, it's not like, like what you hear so often from filmmakers is like everybody started out filming weddings or right, doing right, skits right. or doing yes. social media. Like yes. they do something small which leads to the next thing. Nobody's like, I want to make a movie. And then they go out and film a movie. Like, it's like you make these other things right. first and you build credibility and show that you can actually tell a story. You don't go out and film that first movie. No. Your, your big one. No, it, it's a process okay. to get there. So if somebody wants to make a movie, like that's their ultimate goal. They need to go out and make. They need to do everything they can on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube right now. Yeah, right now. And that leads to this other. Okay. It do stuff does. for free. Do stuff for this. Right. Don't expect people to start paying you. It, so Sarah was the one who she's like, Neil, I think we could genuinely do this. Now, we got a lot of uh, um, resistance from other people in the process that were saying this might be irresponsible to do. Even these guys because they could across get the country hurt. is right. Yeah. It's th- We took a lot of heat for that. I say we as an organization, not me personally. And Sarah was the one that just kept pushing. Said it. this needs to happen. Yep. This film needs to be made. Yep. So there was a whole crew. Beyond Type One and uh, NLC Creative are the ones that basically they they headed this whole thing up. What we knew is there were a couple things that we could absolutely guarantee. One, there would be accidents, and it felt so bad to say, "Listen, please make sure if somebody wrecks, your GoPro is rolling." I yeah. know that sounds awful, but you need the story. We have to get the footage. Like if yeah. we don't, it do- it doesn't it doesn't hold up. Yeah. Um, and it happened a couple of times. It happened actually quite a few times. Yeah. There were accidents. There's like somebody uh, got knocked off their bike. Uh, somebody actually got hit by a car. They they're slid down. I mean, it was bad. It was or came close to getting hit by a car. Um, we also knew that there would be high and low blood sugar moments, which is extremely dangerous when yep. you're on a bike, especially if you're low. High is painful. Low is dangerous. Isn't that right? They're both painful. Low is the most immediate danger. Okay, got So it. if you're dropping low and you're burning through way more calories, you're burning through that blood glucose. If you're not constantly fueling that, you're going to tank. Yeah. So that's very difficult. And we also thought there's a possibility that some of the team doesn't make it. And like so, they're going to, which out of 21, how many didn't make yeah, it? Well, one, one stop. What was his name? 
I'm not. You can't say his name. I can go watch it. It, It's uh, yeah. Somebody doesn't make it. uh, And, and he did his best. Um, he, he did his best. He, he didn't, he definitely did not make it. I'm not judging him. Like I did one race. I don't have oh, time one. And I, I mean, was, I finished, but I was almost, I literally almost died. So reality hit everybody in the face when they first started this one. Cause they're like, this is brutal. We're in the rain. We're in the cold. And we're on we're bike doing it trails. We're do, it's <laughs> every single day. Yeah. So we did a couple. I rode with them one day while I had other people film with us. I rode for a day just to get a feel for, hey, what is this actually like when you're out here? Oh, this is actually way trickier than what you think it is. So I spent one day riding. And then I spent the last seven or eight days with the team camping in a hotel um, at a a campsite, uh, sleeping in like a church building. I mean, this is where they slept. So it wasn't like, hey, they're they're in really nice hotels. hotels, No. Oh, gosh, no. It was, it was really difficult. They were like sleeping on picnic benches in, in like storage buildings. It was, it was tough. You're, yeah. you're eating the food that you're carrying with you and and you're really doing it. So that was, I say that was the easy part. There were nerve wracking, harrowing. We've lost two drones on this, that there's one in the Redwood forest that we'll never get back. We don't know where that is. Uh, Justin Free and I were on that trip and uh, we got some great footage. I don't know where that drone is. It's gone and it's never coming and back. And they let you film in the Redwood forest. That's awesome. Uh, you can actually film from outside the Redwood Forest as long as it takes off there. Okay. But you, it's just, you have to then land it outside the Redwood Got Forest. Got it. You, you can't actually take off but from inside the National But you guys landed it in <laughs> the Redwood Forest. <laughs> we totally right. Did. So right now, all told, I have one there. We lost one in Colorado. That wasn't me. I didn't do that one. Uh, I have lost one, not on this trip, but we have one that's in the Arkansas River by the Clinton Library. Rest in peace. And I have one that's in the Amazon rainforest, in, in the actual Amazon uh, river. So it's That's great. So hot. Yeah, it's great. So the, the difficult part wasn't necessarily filming, although you have to have this mentality for a documentary, you capture everything. Oh yeah. Everything. And you're, you don't get to stop filming. They, hey, they're going to go over here and have dinner. Or I'm going to go, we'll film you guys doing that. Hey, yep. so we, and it got a little tedious cause we're setting up times to record interviews with them. And they're dead tired. Yeah, they don't want they to do it. Don't they're want, finished. So we, ha- I had to let up on some of those. Where the team really hit its like lowest point was St. Louis. Uh, well, is it because that's where they found Nelly? <laughs> he said uh, it in a song. You can find May in St. Louis. May. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm the worst. Go ahead. No. The, uh, it's because some of the hills in uh, that they had gone through in Kentucky, in Tennessee, and all of that, getting over to St. Louis was just... The, the team starts to fall apart. Our crew was starting to get tired. Their legs were dead tired. Tensions were at an absolute all-time high. Uh, it was it was really St. Louis feels like it'd be early in the trip, though, right? Going across the United States? You would think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit early. So <laughs> Is it because they realize, like, we're not even halfway across, yeah. and we're, like, exhausted? Yeah. Yeah. So they you, you come together. Uh, and right we, now we, we did a, we did <laughs> we did a big, we did a big pep talk pep talk for that. Um, the soundtrack was really interesting, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, the soundtrack was really interesting because Josh Hoover and Matt Huber they they did something really cool. They used bike sounds, the sounds of spokes and tires and gears and all that kind of stuff to create the percussion. You're making fun of me. They Don't created mind. they, they saying, created I mean, the percussion sides of some of the songs yeah. out of that. They went into studio and recorded all that. We actually got a crew together. I don't know if you we got a crew together and we tested filming in the back of trucks, hanging off with harnesses and gimbals and all that kind of stuff. And that's how we got most of the road. Just say I don't know if you were part of that team because i, I wasn't <laughs> i wasn't invited to that either so bitter i'm so I'm not sorry. bitter I'm it's so just sorry. like oh I, I don't know how many people have you started I a tra- podcast with just me how many people have filmed more stuff than me posted more videos none, than none, me none and i didn't absolutely get an ask yeah, well at least we got josh rawls dad involved <laughs> He's great. He listens. I'm kidding. He's on our Patreon. No, I'm They're just kidding. Great. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, he, so Josh Rawls' dad had never been out of the state. I know. He deserved to go. Boy, what it is. So what I called him and I said, you're a wheel man. I said, you don't ever have to pick up a camera. But we, and what's, cra- okay, what's crazy about this is where we were at, um, you know, in Moab, things got brutally difficult with the route with where we were headed. We were trying to get from point A to point B and some of the trails weren't there. Some of the uh, the route was washed out. We got on a, a road that turned into a dirt trail. And this in this dirt trail, we realized these, these bikes cannot go. They're not able to. So what we did is in one of the trucks, 
we actually put Josh uh, or Joe Rawls drove these trucks with the bikes and with cyclists back and forth. It was like uh, like a 15 minute round trip to each location where he did. He had to do it like five times to get all these cyclists and the bikes there. And they genuinely did it. Now, they left me and Josh and John Newberry alone we sat down on a couple of boxes and we had our phones barely had any signal and we just sat there and waited for them to get the cyclists from point a to point b so you just don't know what you're going to run into in the middle of a documentary it, uh, you just have to be ready to capture it in the moment. So there was like a moment where um, after uh, Napa, they had a parade, they had a police escort, you have all these other things. So I'm f- literally flying a drone directly over a, a, a full on police escort. There were like eight cop cars, four in front, four behind. I'm flying a drone directly over the cop cars through these city streets right outside of Napa. I'm like, I'm going to get arrested. Yeah. And we didn't. And it was okay. You're it like, great. I'm got this drone. Uh, Tom Holland's about to come in and take out these drones. Execute the drones. Taking the drones. Seriously, that's the thing, though, that people don't realize about making films. Like every moment you record, it is three to four times that amount of time in the editing room. Oh my gosh! It's because like you sit here and think like I'm filming. Like when I used to shoot weddings, um, you know, at first I was like hiring, like actually Justin Free. I would hire Justin Free to yep. come in and be my second shooter. We could get two shots, all that. Well, um, Amanda saw that I was paying him and said, well, just let me come do that and then we'll save the money. Well, I realized quickly, Amanda doesn't want to be there. <laughs> and she would learn as little as possible to have to do it. Like I'd have to set up a camera and be like, okay, just sit here and yeah, stare stay, at this. Stay here. But like what I started doing was I'm like in the editing room, I'm like, I'm not going to use her shot. Hers is my backup. Yeah. So I would literally tell her like, Hey, I just need to look like you're filming. Don't record anything because I knew that would add time in the editing room. You're sitting here talking about drone shots and GoPros and all this footage. Yeah. I remember I went and saw a documentary at uh, little rock film festival and it was like a one hour movie. And they said they were like interviewing the director afterwards. And he said that they had like 90 hours of footage that went into this Mm -hmm. one hour. And he said, in the industry, that is extremely small amount that of footage for a one hour documentary. It's crazy. Like that's the thing you are filmed. I mean, you have 72 terabytes of footage. That's absolutely it was a lot. Insane. We shot everything in 4K so that we could actually do this for cinema or if it was actually going to make it to the screen. And it did. Um, so let's say I'm looking at it right now. So if we stopped on the 17th, so you've got one month, two months, three months. Three, four, three and a half months. So we decided to do something stupid. Sorry, I'll let you back. I was going to say, I don't know. What are we doing right now? <laughs> so we finished the middle of August was when they hit the tape. So they have a tire dipping ceremony in New York City where they start their back tire in the Atlantic Ocean. That's cool. And their tire dipping ceremony is them hitting their front tire in the Pacific Ocean when they got there. So it was on Christie Field Beach right there at the Golden Gate Bridge. And we got that from the three days after that, after we had the wrap-up party at GoPro headquarters and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was it was incredible. We'd get everything together, dinner, lunch with everybody, and we pack up and come back. We didn't stop. There wasn't a day that we stopped from after that. So I think it would have been the 20th of August – until uh, November 14th, which is World Diabetes Day. That's and, when the video uh, was going to launch, right? right. And that's film. where the premiere was. And we we set a ridiculous... They actually just said, don't pressure yourself. Don't do it. But we knew that there was a way. If we could do it on World Diabetes Day, it would get more traction, more viewership, yeah. more everything. So what they did is they booked a theater in Los Angeles to do the premiere there. So... Well, thankfully, during that time frame, <laughs> at coming. least you weren't hit by a car I, I knew it was coming. and almost killed. So we were, I was working basically every day, every night. We were editing. We had to do what they're called daily. Well, not dailies, but I would have to send in these reels of here's what we got edited today. And I would send it in to the producers uh, in uh, San Francisco every day, and we would talk through what worked and what didn't work. There's a good reason why you have a good producer that they're helping you walk through it and you don't fall in love with your own footage. Yeah. Because if I had my way, this movie would have been four hours. It would have been the Snyder Peter cut. Peter Jackson. When can we watch the Snyder cut? <laughs> Black and white, four by three aspect ratio. It would have been great. Yeah. Uh, because you really have a hard time separating out. Yeah. Hey, this is first time viewer. doesn't really care about that. You need to be really careful. So yeah. 
uh, she, she, Sarah, um, and, and the whole team would help me cut that down every day. But while the editing was going on, I would get up early and just to clear my head, I would ride the one wheel around our neighborhood, which is like like, a motorized skateboard essentially. Yeah. And, um, it would just, I would clear my head. Well, that morning was a Sunday and I went over to McDonald's and I was going to get something to drink. And, uh, and that's when I got hit by a car. Uh, and then they left you in the road. An elderly couple hit me. How do you know they were elderly couple? I saw them. I saw everything. It's a red car. Uh, and they hit they, you. I tried to. So yeah. if you see old people in a red car, uh, <laughs> just yank them out Grand Theft Auto style. Gina had a really hard time with that. Oh, because I bet. Because the police can't do anything about it. So the, I saw Why not? They came that's up. literally their job. They can't find them. They don't know who it is. And they're like, maybe they don't know they hit me. I'm like, they didn't hit a possum. Yeah. Like this is. Even if you hit a possum, you know you hit a possum. Yeah. So I was in the hospital. You see hit a human and they flip over your hood. How long was it in the hospital? Four days? Five days? I don't know. Anyways, I had a, I fractured my um, my skull and I had a brain bleed. In the process of that, then my eyesight and my... my, uh, my uh, Sense of smell? Uh, yeah, it was all gone. So um, I had to wear these prism lenses while I was editing. So Gina took me. This is ridiculous. I don't recommend this. The only time that I took off in this whole time was when I was in the hospital and the first day back. And I convinced Gina to drive me over to the edit bay so I could sit there and edit. So she would have to walk because I couldn't see stairs. I couldn't function. She would walk me up the spiral staircase and I would get in that edit room and I would edit all day long and she would come back and get me uh, uh, like late on in the evening. She's like, you're tired. You need to go back to bed. And I would just keep doing it. So our producers and everybody who was in charge are like, Neil, you don't need to still make this. We can cancel it. We can cancel the, uh, the premiere. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll postpone it. We'll push the theater out. I mean, they, they rented the whole theater. It was incredible. And I was like, no, I can't do that. They're like, no, you can't. It's, I don't know if I were going back now. It was ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. it, was, it was probably one of the dumbest things slash amazing things I've ever done. So we got in the edit process. Um, the, the narration then we actually had to go and narrate it. So Victor Garber narrates it. And what do people know him from? Um, he's been in a lot of stuff. They would know in, if they he, saw him. Oh yeah. He's in Titanic. He's in, um, uh, oh my gosh. What's the, uh, legally blonde. Uh, he's in Sicario. He's in Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, he's in all these other. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much every um, probably good rich guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, incredible. That's that's what I'm saying. And he's like theatrically. He's he's like uh, he does Broadway stuff as well, and he does TV. So what's hilarious about this? So most of the TV shoots I've actually got to work on. This is my fourth project with him. Uh, he he hates doing stuff for young crowds. So when he did Lee, uh, is it Lee, uh, Legally Le- legends of tomorrow? Oh, we got it. it was the show on, uh, the CW. Yeah. He plays like a guy, firestorm, something like that. The guy that turns into a fireball and, uh, and it goes up, but he's like, I have to, he's like, <laughs> like he's so nice. He goes, Neil, I'm up on a, a rooftop in Vancouver in the middle of the night. It's raining. It's freezing. I'm in front of a green screen. I'm acting with a, a green tennis ball and a guy in a green suit over here. I don't even know who I'm acting with. I have a really hard time. I'm out there freezing. And then I, re- I record for like 30 seconds and I go back into my trailer. He's like, my, it's just brutal. I just want to do something where I'm on a stage and I'm doing like Shakespeare and all this other stuff. And I was like, I, 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 I give me the green screen with the guy that yeah. you don't even know it's going to be. He just, he's like, I don't get it. I don't understand what they're doing with this. He's a, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. So we went back into New York city and we filmed, uh, uh, we, we brought the, the, it wasn't really a finished edit, but, uh, what we brought was, this is the actual movie and what you, you line it out. So he would actually record his dialogue over top of watching the screen while it's actually happening. There's like 80 different lines he has in there. What's funny about him is like, I, I to put the placeholders in it. I did my voice as a voiceover to, Hey, this is where this voiceover is going to go. Here's where the music is going. And we got almost all this stuff done and we get there and, and I'm like, okay, Victor, we're going to go through this. We got this whole crew is there. I mean, the biggest soundboard I've ever seen. They got this massive screen. He's in this booth. His voice sounds incredible. And I, so I'm trying to coach him, which is ridiculous. What in the world am I doing? It's directing. That's yeah, well, the job. What's tricky about it is, uh, you know, it's this back and forth balance of does he... Does he want this direction? Does he not? This is really his first time seeing this actual footage. He's heard me do it, but I said, okay. I said, Victor, why don't we do this? I said, um, I said, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of direction on these. He goes, Neo. <laughs> he called me down. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you two. No, I'll give you three takes of each one of these. If you don't like those, then you can direct me from there. 
Yeah. And I was like, deal. Okay, got it. And I say maybe 10 of them. I had to redirect them on. Out of how many? Out of 80 plus. He got, what I'm, I'm telling you, like he didn't give me three of the same thing. He gave us three completely different takes of each one. I'm like, I don't know how you would say that. And it, oh, there it is. He said it different. It was incredible. We added in, this is, this is hilarious. I had him add in some things where he said things to my girls uh, at the end. It was like, Hey, these are all the, these are all the lines from the movie. These are the things for the actual trailer. This is for some of the promotional stuff. He and I filmed a video together and uh, just kind of promoting it. And then I said, Hey, would you mind saying like hello to my girls? Cause they were watching alias at the time and a couple other things. Yeah. And, he, and he did it. He was so nice about it. Um, what's funny is, how so, do you, I'm sorry. Go. How do you not get him to record your voicemail? Oh yeah. Oh, like, well, this is the side <laughs> of Neil. His voice is incredible. Yeah. So uh, fast forward, actually, uh, about a year and a half later, uh, Sarah had to go to the hospital. I mean, emergency surgery at NYU. I actually ended up going in there, and we sat down in her room with a bunch of other producers, some pretty big name actors, and him, and we watched this thing on the uh, the movie. On, yeah, the movie on her. Ju- her hospital room at NYU had a, a TV bigger than what I have in my home. And That's... it was incredible. So we pulled the cables out, we connected it over to the computer and played it. And he said, it's the weirdest thing to sit there and watch it with the guy who, and so we get to the end of it and he goes, man, so many things I would have done different with my voice now, knowing that that's the way it all came out. I'm yeah. like, good or bad? He goes, just different. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. All right. What is well, that that's the, I mean, that's the point of a director though, right? Like, even with like as talented as he is, as experienced as he yeah, is, he yeah. doesn't know the scope of the movie. Right. He doesn't know where the story is going. It's not. He doesn't have to. That's the point of the director. Right. People are like the directors. Over, what do they do? Just sit there like yeah. uh, they're Yellow talented. People. Like they're the ones that see the scope of all of oh. it, and they're the ones that are trying to make this a unified piece right. and not right. an SNL episode where it's just like yep. these individual like things that don't match up. Like you have to match up. And that's the thing. Like, I, you know what? I was also, um, I was the talent in a short film <laughs> foot trackers, uh, with a UCA student film. I love it. But that's the thing. Like, and, and the director was incredible, but his specialty was like special effects and things like that. That's what he right, went into right, after, right. but he's trying to direct and write. And it's like, I did not, he did not give me a picture of like, this is going to tie in here or this is your mentality. Like actually he even told me different mentalities to have. Yeah. So I'm like, I look like I have like different personalities throughout the film because it's like, I'm going in after three hours of waiting on them to set up lighting. I go in and I say, you dig. And they're like, <laughs> like no, you dig, you dig. Okay, great. Like you dig, you dig. Like, how do you want me to hit you this? Dig, you dig. Like, I don't know. We need to dig. It, it's really tricky. When, and especially <laughs> we need to dig. I got it. <laughs> got it. We got to uh, cook. Gotta cook. <laughs> What's funny about that is, especially most of these things are filmed out of sequence. Yeah. And you don't know. You need to go, what did we just come out of? What are we going into so I can connect these dots? Yes, so that's exactly. where That's where you go wrong in a lot of movies. Exactly. And that's what it felt like. It felt like I was just like piecing together. Yep. Different thing. And a good director, I think, will say, okay, remember, you're coming out of this emotion. Yeah. This is what you know. This is what yep. you don't know. Because you know the whole film. You've read the script. Right. Like, right. you're trying to sit there and imagine that as a trained actor. <laughs> as a trained actor. Victor Garber yeah. and I. Yeah, Victor. <laughs> Um, uh, we, we had a lot of fun filming it. The, the actual edit and all that kind of stuff came together. And then what ended up happening is this, so the producers are the real people of power in this whole thing. It's yeah. not the director. You think that it is, but I think we've said this before. The reason why the producer accepts the Oscar for best picture is because they've done the most work. They're the ones who secure financing. They're the ones who help me get the actors. They're the ones who get the locations. They get all the extra stuff. They work with the execs, the, the, all of that kind of stuff. The director is really just in charge of capturing and editing all this stuff together. Well, so, they're not even most of the time. You, most directors don't edit their own film. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, that's correct. They have an editor. Um, so we ha- I, ha- I had other help. I had people help with gra- motion graphics. I had other people help with little edits along the way and help piece things together. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't go through all of it. I also had other people help scrub through footage. The amount of time that it would have taken to actually oh, gosh, go through yes. all that, you can't. So you start cataloging all of that, and you're trying to put this story together that's a cohesive story. And we were able to get, um, you know, most of it in there. There's there's a lot on the cutting room floor for sure. I mean, yeah. If not, it's a like it's an, too. It, yeah, it's like it, a two thousand hour right, short it's, film. It's awful. Um, it's not so a short film anymore. After you almost died, I offered to help edit. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah, you promptly ignored it. I don't remember. <laughs> well, you had almost died. Um, so like head injury, I just said, Hey bro, whatever you need, I'll help. You know, if you need me to help edit, 
I did not like whatever. Know well, that, that was you almost died the same week my grandmother actually did oh, die, and that's so like right. I was caught up in a lot of that stuff. Um, Dude. So yeah, you got hit by a car and survived. She was in a car, got hit oh, by a car. Oh, that's and terrible. Didn't die. It didn't live. This took a weird turn. Yeah, I'm sorry, no, but I did okay. offer to help edit. Um, I don't even, even though I, I don't remember a lot. Well, of it. you were also editing on Premiere, and I've only edited on Final <laughs> Cut Pro. Um, yeah. So I'm like, I can figure out how yeah. to edit on an entire. So Tyler, system. you did get in the end credits. Uh, there's a, there's a line <laughs> in there. What's interesting is you can put anything in the credits that you want, Nobody as reason. long as the legal parts are in there. Yeah. So what we ended up doing is this is where the if you're going to make a mil- a movie, I would say this: start off knowing where your um uh, where your distribution is going to be. Mm-hmm. Distribution is the most important thing. In like where you're going to put it. That's yes. That where is this going to live? Yep. So originally when we started off, we were going to go the Netflix and iTunes route. This is, I mean, this is three years ago. The Netflix and iTunes route was the best route. So what you have to do is you actually have to, you have to have an actual physical movie premiere. That's called four walled. This is what, I don't know, I think I've talked about this before. Yeah. Forewalling means that if you want your movie to be up for any kind of awards or to go to film festivals, you have to have it. It has to play on a screen for a certain amount of time for a certain amount of days. Yeah. We were actually working on that. We did. We had the movie premiere in L.A. It was incredible. Like, it was wild. Like, an actual movie poster up, people coming in, you know, to see it. Uh, we had, like, the the red carpet and all that kind of stuff afterwards. I still couldn't see very well at that one. It was I mean, I still had those prism glasses on, yeah. so like one eye was over. What are you looking at? Me I like could that? see out of both eyes, just so you know. I could see out of both eyes, not just I wasn't blind in either of my eyes. So. You thought I was gonna say it, but I did. I didn't want to ruin I know, your flow. I know you didn't. No, it didn't matter. So what ended up happening is we were caught up in the distribution side of this because so Nick Jonas gave us permission to use his songs in it, all of his everything in it. He put a lot of energy into this. He was in the movie. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and I, he was one hundred percent for it. He actually wanted to ride for a day with the, and his his uh, his manager would not allow it. Well, it's not up is, to them. I know they're not the boss of him. Well, well, actually, they're they called are. managers, they're. not leaders. <laughs> <laughs> leaders grow. John Max with, managers Ma- maintain. Margaret and I, I, I rode a bicycle. <laughs> Nick Jonas. He, we listened to his songs. I would have rather listened to the audio book of my book. Couldn't say on the bicycle. I had too much to tanning. <laughs> I, I got my tanning bed <laughs> attached to the motorcycle. To the, yes, yeah, yeah. A stationary Hagrid's bike. motorbike. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, so what we ended up doing is we let it go for in-person premiere events all across the country and in Canada. And that all happened. Um, they actually had a couple of them that happened down in, uh, in Australia as well. And... Um, we were trying to figure out, because what happens is if you sell off the rights for this thing, let's say that, that well, we, we were really, really close to actually getting it for one week in like 600 screens across the U.S. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you then cannot put this on another platform later on. So it was like an either or. We knew what we could gain as far as revenue from it, but we also knew that it would, it would kind of shortchange where we were going. Then we went into a big battle between do we do Netflix or we do uh, – it was iTunes. And I think at the time, maybe Amazon was just up and coming, and we were close. We almost got it on uh, – this is hilarious uh, – Delta Airlines. Uh, as one of the in-flight documentary yes. movies that was on there. And we ended up saying, no, we, we wanted it to be on YouTube because more people would be able to see it in its yeah. entirety. And it's what it really came down to is it was free. What cuts your market down is if somebody doesn't have, well, I don't know anybody that doesn't have Netflix, but there is a large majority of people. So we got it translated into a bunch of different languages, all the subtitles and all that kind of stuff, and they're just we put it out there on YouTube. So, so if you want to see it, if you want yeah. to watch the actual full yeah. film, yeah. You can go to youtube.com, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E <laughs> dot C-O-M. You can go yeah, there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. www. Dot, no, I'm just kidding. Go to YouTube and search Bike Beyond Documentary, correct? Yep. Is that the best way to yeah. search? Yeah. The, yeah, search and bike, then, bike Beyond Documentary. And when you do that, you're going to get two videos that look legit, okay? You want to look at the length of the video. If it's about a minute and a half, two minutes, that's, that's the a, trailer. There's a trailer out there. Okay, there's but if you actually want to watch the actual film, it's right around an hour yeah. and... Uh, it's an hour and a half, exactly. Half, exactly. It's an hour and a half, exactly. Is we that try- with the credits? Yep. With what about before movie oh. trailers? Because if I show up late... <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to be... You're gonna be but you can watch it right now. I'd recommend yeah. it. It's better. I mean, honestly, they could have watched, you know, 
<laughs> almost two thirds of it in the amount of time we've done this so podcast. It, it about actually it. did win. It, went, it won best feature film at the at, at an LA film festival, um, and I, I, we were really proud of it. We tried to get into Sundance, and it didn't work Ugh. because that's uh, on you, Butch Cassidy. It was, and and I was really frustrated by that. No, what it ended up happening is is there was too much of the Beyond Type One organization in it oh. that they th- they thought that it felt like it was more of like a promo. You know, yeah, yeah, and it, what it isn't, but they just they couldn't get past that. Yeah, so. They said <sighs> um, trash. You know, um, I filmed a feature length film once. What? It's true. It was called the ultimate movie. And it was about what? some friends who were trying to get a game together Why against their, op- op- well, because I never finished it. <laughs> I tried to make it in one week. Re- Shoot, oh my edit, gosh. Everything. And, um, I had some technical difficulties with final, it was final cut pro seven. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. So it was like garbage. Um, and it took a long to render anytime you made any edits, that was like a long time to render because I was doing something wrong anyways. And, uh, shot the whole thing, shot it in two days. And we, it's bad, bro. And like it's, it was, oh I was gosh. literally making up the script on the spot. I'm like, are you guys going to say this? You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And it was about a guy who's over the girl. And the only way to win her over is to defeat his arch nemesis. Um, I want to see this. And like, this is the only, like there's pieces there's, there was like a clip from it that I put on, I ended up putting it on the internet. It was like, I was like, you know what? I never get, didn't get the movie done in time because of some, that editing problem. I was going to try to get into a film festival and then I had that one part where it's like a face off between them and the, and it's, it's ridiculous. Ah. It's absolutely, think of laser cats, but a movie, <laughs> but the plot is oh, worse. I'm here for and that. like before the final ultimate Frisbee battle, the, it's uh, there, the guy the the bad guy, like there's the main guy, which is me because of course, you know, whatever. Naturally. Um, I learned that from Will Smith. Always go by your name and be yeah. the main guy well, there it is. and name it after yourself. Will. And then the bad guy, which is my friend, Jared, he had his little squad behind him and his squad was all just like 10 year old kids and younger. <laughs> and we made them look like the villains. It was me and my friends. And we, we see them at the park and he starts making fun of me. And this is, this summarizes the whole movie. He starts making fun of me and I, and like, it's closing in the camera switching from him to me. And I go, stop, collaborate and no, listen. No, you didn't. Ice is back with my brain. <laughs> and I say the entire song. It's like three minutes long in the middle of the movie oh where I do the lines from Ice Ice Baby in a what? talk to him. And we slowly get closer and closer until I get into his face. And then we go have an ultimate Frisbee battle. Oh my God. It's the, it's the worst movie ever. I want to see this. Do you have the footage? Because we could edit this. I probably do. And no, we Find shouldn't. the footage. No. We can edit it. Because we there was chunks that we didn't get done that would have tied together the already garbage plot. And we oh. filmed it in front of a green screen. I think it was me, like some more dolphins. <laughs> it was completely absurd. I, I want to see this. No. I will oh not. My and then gosh. we did a short film with my friend Knox, who is actually a really successful podcaster now. And he helped write it. It's called Checkmate. And uh, it was, it's ridiculous as well. Man. And we never did it. I don't finish things, apparently. No. I, I, it's not easy to do. It, this takes so much time. Yeah. Well, the good this. thing for you is that there was accountability. Me was just me pushing myself to make these garbage oh, I films. Was, I was terrified we weren't going to hit the deadline. Yeah. That, that would add a whole level of pressure. So, like, yeah, when I signed up yeah. to do, like, Whenever I, um, I pretty much like signed myself up to do 120 hours of like online training, like, you know, three times. So like 360 hours, but you do 120, but you got to re-upload, redo, reschedule, yeah, redescribe. Yeah. And then you do that, like the three months of filming that, like outside, like at night, I'm like, you know, eight to midnight, eight to one, you're like oh. recording and editing and chopping it all together and putting it up. It's like, it's so much pressure. Cause you see that deadline. Right. And then that's, that was without me almost dying. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was stressed out and I was like, I have to edit, shoot. And like, I got to yeah. fill in a gap of 45 minutes here for this day and an hour and a half here. And I got to get yep. this, like, I don't know enough to fill three hours worth of content on this. I need to find somebody to, it was, it was a lot of pressure. It's and so it's like, if you're doing this, yes, you need deadlines. Cause that pushes you to get it done. You don't end up with that garbage movie, never making it, which is probably for the best. <laughs> um, and, but you've got like, you need to have deadlines. You need to set storyboard. You need to have people to hold you accountable, other yeah. eyes, producers to look over it yeah. to make sure. Cause you do, you fall in love with your footage. And so it's like, you don't want to cut. It's like laser cats. The one that we made that I wanted to be 15 like, minutes long. <laughs> and you're like, how about we get it under seven? Yeah. Well, no, you know. actually I had it at seven and a half. You got it to five. Um, but you can tell which one I put on YouTube. <laughs> the director's cut. I actually titled it director's cut. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing. Like I would set deadlines and then also just talk to Neil. He'll produce your movie we'll help. for we'll a hefty fee. We'll help it. Oh yeah. Yeah. We need money. Patreon.com. So explain everything. <laughs> do we three V three this? Yeah, we have okay. to. All right. Okay. Welcome to the party, pal. 
This is 3v3. Okay. Three people. Yeah. You're making a movie. I don't care what that movie is. Okay. You have three people that you can have as your actors in it. Okay. Who do you want? Christopher Nolan. <laughs> in space. <laughs> He's my first actor. Oh, yeah, naturally. Okay. But he's filming it, As but it's actor. filming him, filming okay. it. Okay. Okay. It's like Bullworth. <laughs> oh, no, no, not Bullworth. What is the one with Eddie Murphy? Bullworth's the one with the politician. What's the one with Eddie? Bulletproof. Um, not Bulletproof. That's uh, Adam Sandler. Oh, what is it? Eddie I'm, Murphy. I know what you're and he about. plays his brother. It's Steve Martin, I think, is in it. Starts with a B. Oh, what is it called? <laughs> Find it. Find it. Eddie Murphy, Steve Martin movie. Is it Steve Martin? Bowfinger. Bowfinger. Oh, so close. All of our listeners were like. It's where they filmed them making a terrible yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's amazing. All right, what's yours? So Christopher Nolan in space. Tracy Morgan. <laughs> I think he is. He, he is. He's incredible. Brilliant. Brilliant. I absolutely love him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Donald 100%. Glover. Oh, yeah. Because he's the greatest at everything. Yeah. I, I would actually agree. And with it's you. really just so that I can meet Donald Glover. Man. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I gotta go Denzel. Ooh, that would be good. That's Those a good two one. together in a movie? Oh my gosh. Those two together in a movie. Who? I already forgot your first choice. Wow. Tracy Morgan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Tracy Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's not about you. It's about yeah. me. All right. And my, and Denzel. okay. no, Denzel's incredible. Yeah, like I, I, like I was trying to think of a bad performance by Denzel. There's not one. No, I can't think of There's one. There's not one. Like even if his movies are just okay, he's still yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. He's incredible. He's one of the it's best actors. Fault. That he's it's incredible. Not his fault. I mean, it is his fault. He's incredible. Okay. Thanks to him. <laughs> um, I want to, you know, obviously I want to go Sarah McLaughlin, <laughs> but I'm not going. I'm not okay. going to do okay. it. Okay. Okay. Not going to okay. that. Okay. Not gonna, I'm going to say Andrew Garfield. Wow. Yeah. Bring him wow. and Donald Glover full circle. Yeah. You know, Christopher Nolan. Okay. We always, you know, yeah, he's yeah, got to be yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think Andrew Garfield in that last Spider-Man movie, he just won me over. Like, I love him more than ever. He's amazing. And I already loved him because- of him and Ryan Reynolds when Ryan Gosling won that award. <laughs> like, that was one of the funniest things ever, and I re appreciate good comedy. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. He's a possibility. I, I got to go I gotta go with... Uh, ah, it's between Tina Stanley Fey or Chris oh, Week. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Tina Fey. Tina Fey. Uh, yeah, there's no women in my movie. That's she terrible. Can, she can write and act. Oh, gosh. And that's, that, that's, uh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So good. All right. So do we want to, do we want to um, rock it? See if it'll rock. Neither of us picked the rock. I know. <laughs> it's understood. He's like, it's understood. The question on everyone's mind, will it rock? The answer is probably yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> Would this movie be any Would better? Would Mike Beyond be better if the rock was in it? I mean, what part does he play? He's the guy that gets kicked off halfway. <laughs> But then when you guys are walking and the music's playing, they're about to dip it in there. He comes yeah. out of the water like uh, an ogre. Yeah, like a kraken. And he's dressed as Shrek. And he starts <laughs> ripping your tires off, bashing people in the head. Oh, my god! That'd be sick. And Neil's like, cut, cut. He's like, cut this. <laughs> and he rips off rips. his cast. Oh, <laughs> my like, I don't know why he had a cast yeah, yeah, he had on, a but cast. he's dressed as Shrek. He has two. a cast. Yeah, okay. Shrek one. Shrek two. two. Okay. He rips it off. Wow. Yeah. Naturally. So, yeah, it's better. This makes perfect sense. It's only, and he you, takes down the Golden Gate Bridge while he's doing it. Oh, yeah. It will, yeah. He pulls the metal because he's Magneto. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by the way, that was the he's only thing you did ask me. You were like, he, you showed me the end clip and you said, how can we make this better? And I actually gave some advice. And I don't know if you agree you did it or not. What was it? I think I might have said slow down. I felt like the moment went pretty fast. And I, I was like, slow, like down. slow down, be in this moment because it's almost like this, the, the culmination here. I want to feel that it's the culmination. So you did help. I mean... A lot of people want to give me full credit for it, <laughs> but they say, here's the thing they say about me, Neil. The I'm Academy like, of Motion Pictures wants to give you full credit. They gave credit me for the it. Christopher Nolan in Space Award <laughs> for assist. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm the John Stockton Award of assist wow. for movies. That's yeah, a great name for it. The, the ending was, uh, yeah, the ending was, was so hot. Was emotional. Yeah, well, The Rock <laughs> dressed as Shrek, too. I mean, how could you not? And yeah. Magneto. So that makes it better. <laughs> and what if we could only, if we could get Adele to help sing the soundtrack? Before. She pops out of the water. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It's not, she's not singing it for the rock. She pops out of the water as well. Yeah, well, she doesn't pop out of the water. She pops out of the rock's traps. <laughs> Hello. Whoop, whoop. Hello. Wow. Wow. This whole thing was very inf it information. Was. It and was. Like, uh, and then it informative took a turn. until now. Man. Until the rock gets involved. Yep. Well, all right. Well, that's how you make apparently. a movie. 
That's how you make a movie. What would be your one piece of advice to anybody that wanted to make a movie? Start doing something today with what you have. Don't wait for the right gear. Don't wait for the right moment, the right opportunity. Go film something and post it today. Give yourself a today deadline. That's good. And my advice would be <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> patreon.com slash explain everything. I missed, now, I missed that if opportunity. I, if, I, if I don't forget, I will post the, okay, on the Patreon, we'll post your the link to your video, like okay. the full movie, okay. patreon.com slash explain everything. We'll okay. post a full movie, make it public because it's worth seeing. Um, but then we'll post my clip from my movie that never got made. Um, I'll post it in there as a private link. Only Patreon people oh can see gosh. it. And I'll, you know what I also do? I'll post the link to the short film I was in, Foot Trackers. Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. So we'll post all three of those unless I forget. That's amazing. We'll call it Movie Week. I love with it. With Tyler and Neil. I love it. Okay. I think it's, this is going to win. <laughs> movie and then week. I'll post a link to my TED Talk. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to the Explain Everything podcast. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Explain Everything Podcast. We're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, but you're already here. We love you. No, actually, we're in love with you. (laughs) Thanks for coming on our TED Talk. Bye.